Navitas Semiconductor Corp. is currently officially closed for the holiday, having wrapped up its final trading session on Christmas Eve at a price of exactly $7.66. The stock finished the shortened session largely flat, showing a minor decline of roughly 0.4%, which might seem uneventful on the surface. However, to anyone who has been tracking this ticker for the last 12 months, uneventful is the last word they would use. Seeing Navitas trade near $8 is a psychological shock for many who remember it languishing in the $2 range just a year ago. The expectation for a stock that has rallied over 140% in a single year is that the tank is empty, the valuation is stretched, and the smart money is about to pull the rug. The chart looks like a vertical line that defies gravity, and the natural human instinct is to expect a reversion to the mean, a crash back down to reality. But the reality of Navitas Semiconductor right now is not a story of an overextended hype train, it is a story of a fundamental industrial shift that the market is still frantically trying to price in. While the bears look at the chart and see a bubble, the bulls look at the order book and see the beginning of a super cycle. The disconnect comes from the fact that for years, Navitas was viewed as a phone charger company, a niche player making fast charging chips for Chinese smartphones. That narrative is dead. The reality is that Navitas has successfully executed its Navitas 2.0 pivot, positioning its gallium nitride and silicon carbide technology as the critical power infrastructure for the AI data center. Center boom. We are no longer talking about charging phones, we are talking about powering the most energy-hungry infrastructure in human history. This shift from consumer electronics to enterprise-grade power density is why the stock has refused to sell off significantly even after such a massive run-up. When you analyze the recent price action, particularly the consolidation we have seen over the last two weeks, it tells a fascinating story of accumulation. The stock hit a 52-week high of $17.79 earlier this year during the peak of the AI power frenzy and has since retraced to this $7.66 level. To a novice, this 50% drop from the highs looks like a disaster, but to a seasoned technician, this is a textbook flag pattern. The stock is digested Adjusting its gains, shaking out the weak hands who bought the top while institutional investors are stepping in to defend the $7 line. We saw this clearly on Tuesday when the price dipped towards $7.60 and a wave of buy orders immediately absorbed the supply. This indicates that there is a Fed put of sorts underneath this stock, not from the Federal Reserve but from large asset managers who missed the initial move and are desperate to get exposure to the energy efficiency trade before 2026 kicks off. The sentiment surrounding Navitas on social media platforms like Reddit and X is a study in polarization. You have the OG holders who bought in at $3 and are now sitting on life-changing gains, posting rocket emojis and screaming about a short squeeze. And they might not be wrong. The short interest in Navitas is currently sitting at a staggering 35% of the float. This is an incredibly dangerous setup for the bears. With over 57 million shares sold short, the days-to-cover ratio is creeping up near three days. This means that if a major catalyst hits, like a surprise earnings beat or a new hyperscaler contract, the short sellers will not be able to exit their positions without sending the stock parabolic. The anxiety on the message boards is palpable. Every tick down is met with cries of manipulation, while every tick up is celebrated as the start of the mother of all squeezes. However, we must respect the bearish argument because it is grounded in a very real concern, valuation and dilution. The reality that haunts this stock is that despite the massive revenue growth, Navitas is still burning cash. They reported a net loss of over $19 million in the third quarter of 2025. While this is a significant improvement from the prior year, it is still a loss. The company recently raised $100 million in a private placement in November, which diluted existing shareholders and put a temporary lid on the stock price. Investors are rightfully frustrated by this. They feel that just as the company was turning a corner, management reached into their pockets again. This tension between the promise of future profitability and the pain of current dilution is what keeps the stock volatile. The market is effectively saying, we believe in your tech, but we don't trust your bank account yet. Let's dig deeper into the technology, because this is the moat that defends the valuation.
the core thesis for Navitas is that traditional silicon chips simply cannot handle the power requirements of next-generation AI processors like NVIDIA's Blackwell or whatever comes next. When you pump thousands of watts through a server rack, heat becomes the enemy. Gallium nitride chips run cooler and switch faster than silicon, allowing data centers to shrink their power supplies and fit more processors into the same space. Navitas estimates that this AI power market is a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Their recent partnership announcements with Avnet to expand global distribution and with Scient to build a local ecosystem in India are strategic moves to capture this market. The India piece is particularly interesting. India is aggressively building out its own semiconductor and data center infrastructure to reduce reliance on China. By embedding themselves early with a partner like Scient, Navitas is effectively buying a ticket to one of the fastest growing tech economies in the world. But here's the curiosity loop that few are talking about, the acquisition rumors. In the semiconductor industry, consolidation is the name of the game. When a small company like Navitas proves that it has essential technology that the giants don't have, it puts a target on its back. Companies like Infineon, ST Microelectronics, or even Texas Instruments are watching this space like hawks. They have the manufacturing scale, but they often lack the cutting-edge IP in GAN. If Navitas continues to win designs in AI data centers, it becomes cheaper for a giant to buy them for 2 or $3 billion than to try and compete with them. This buyout premium is an invisible floor under the stock price. Traders aren't just betting on earnings, they're betting on an exit event. Let's pause for a second and get a read on the room. Comment below with your honest take. Do you think Navitas is a prime acquisition target for a major chip maker in 2026, or do you think they'll go it alone and try to become a giant themselves? I want to see if the community prefers a quick buyout pop or the long-term compounder route. Moving into the future outlook, all eyes are fixed on the first quarter of 2026. Management has guided for revenue growth to re-accelerate as the inventory correction in the mobile market finally ends and the data center revenue starts to layer in. The critical metric to watch is the design win pipeline. In their last update, they boasted about $450 million in customer design wins. The market needs to see these wins convert into recognized revenue. If the Q1 report shows a spike in revenue from the enterprise and industrial segment, it will be the proof that the pivot is working. It will validate the Navitas 2.0 thesis and likely trigger a re-rating of the stock toward a higher multiple. We also have to consider the electrification of everything narrative. Beyond data centers, Navitas is making plays in the EV market and the solar inverter market. Their Genie 6 silicon carbide technology is designed for these high-voltage applications. While the EV market has been softer than expected in 2025, it's cyclical. When interest rates eventually come down and consumer demand for EVs picks up, Navitas will have a second wind. They're effectively a call option on the global energy transition. If if you believe that the world will continue to move towards electric vehicles and renewable energy, then you have to believe that power semiconductors will be in high demand. But the risks are non-trivial. The semiconductor industry is notoriously cyclical and capital-intensive. Navitas competes with massive, well-funded incumbents who have the afford to engage in price wars to kill off smaller competitors. If a company like Infineon decides to flood the market with cheap GAN chips to protect its market share, Navitas could see its margins crushed. We saw a glimpse of this margin pressure earlier in the year, when gross margins dipped slightly. This is why the pure play status of Navitas is its greatest strength and its greatest weakness. They don't have a legacy business to fall back on. They have to win on technology and speed. Another factor to watch is the geopolitical angle. With a significant portion of the supply chain still rooted in Asia, any escalation in trade tensions between the U.S. and China could hurt Navitas. They are navigating this by expanding manufacturing partnerships with global foundries in the U.S. and strengthening ties in Europe and India, but the risk remains. Investors need to be aware that a single tariff announcement or export control rule could send the stock down 20% overnight. This is the tail risk that is always lurking in the background of the semi-sector. Let's analyze the institutional footprint. Recent 13F fillings show a mixed back. We have seen some major players like Citadel and Balyosny Asset Management increasing their stakes, which is a bullish sign. These are sophisticated funds that use complex models to track supply chain data. If they're buying, it means their data suggests that the bottom is in. 
However, we also saw some selling from longtime holders who likely took profits after the massive run-up. This rotation from early believers to growth momentum funds is healthy. It stabilizes the shareholder base and reduces volatility over time. Technically, the stock needs to reclaim the $8 level to break the bearish trend of the last few weeks. If it can close above $8.50 on high volume, it opens the door for a run back toward the $10 level. The $10 psychological level is the next major battleground. Conversely, if it loses the $7 support, we could see a flush down to the $6.20 level, which is where the 200-day moving average sits. This would be a painful pill for recent buyers to swallow, but it would likely present a massive buying opportunity for long-term investors. The narrative for Navitas is also heavily tied to the efficiency metric. In a world where data centers are consuming as much power as small countries, efficiency is not just a buzzword, it is a financial imperative. A 1% increase in efficiency can save a hyperscaler millions of dollars in electricity bills. Navitas claims their chips can deliver these savings. If they can prove this at scale, if they can get a public endorsement from a company like Amazon AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft,